So all of you probably remember this module, the MIDI to gate slash trigger and CV module that I made a while ago. Well, it has a problem. It doesn't have one of these on it. And newer MIDI hardware increasingly only has a USB interface, meaning this module is kind of already obsolete and only getting more as time goes on. Now to solve this, first I thought of buying some microcontrollers with USB hosting ability and seeing if I could write some software to read data out of a USB MIDI device. Then after looking at the complexity of the USB and USB MIDI specifications, I realized that it was beyond my coding ability and understanding. Fortunately, there's another way. As you can tell from the video thumbnail, a Raspberry Pi. In this case, a Model 3B. And it has USB sockets to spare. And most importantly, USB hosting is already part of the standard operating system. So let's take this microcontroller based module and modify it for a Raspberry Pi. First, let's take some measurements. Now to cat out the faceplate cutouts, it sure would be nice to attach a monitor to this Pi for setup and if I wanted to use it as a full computer. Let's see, panel mount HDMI connectors. Okay. At those prices, I'm going to do something different. Now an HDMI coupler. Hey, that's more like it. Let's get some of those. And now take a few measurements. Here are the cutouts needed for the connectors. Now to bring in the old module and see if we can make something that lines up with it. The red piece, plywood, that mounts the Pi and the interface PCV to the faceplate. And there, that should just about do it. Now for the PCB. Let's look at the schematic first. This may look daunting, but it's actually quite simple. First, let's look at the power connector. This project will require 5 volt power being available from the Eurorack case, as the Pi and the USB peripherals can easily use over an amp of power. Using the 12 volt rail with a voltage regulator is just impractical. Next is the connection to the Pi itself. Power is supplied to the 40 pin connector, and most everything else uses the SPI port and GPIO for chip select signaling, and the legacy MIDI port ties into the UART of the Pi. The analog outputs are handled by an MCP4902 digital analog converter. The digital outputs using 74HC595 serial to parallel shift registers that also act as a buffer between the Pi and any external connections. The 3.3 volt logic levels output by the Pi should not be a problem for interfacing with the digital to analog converters or the shift registers. I guess we'll find out together though. And that's it. Truly not that complex, but a lot of copy and paste. Here's the schematic for the homemade PCB. Now let's build it. For those of you playing at home, this is the PCB layout I'm going to use for etching. There are more air wires than if this was an analog module, but it still won't be that hard to wire everything up. First lasering the PCB. Then cutting out the face plate. and a quarter inch piece of plywood to mount the Pi and the PCB to. Small indents take care of alignment in the drill press for some pilot holes. Cutting the board out on the table saw. pre-drilling the mounting holes to have some convenient spots to hang the board from for etching. And with the tarnish removed, into the ferric chloride it goes. Perfect every time. And now with the resist removed, 
Time to drill all the holes. Since this is my path forward using MIDI with Eurorack, time to take apart the old MIDI module, as it will not be needed. And almost all the parts in this old module will be used in the new one. Test fitting the Pi to the new faceplate. Looks like a little tweaking with the file is in order. There, that's just about perfect. The HDMI coupler fits too. Now to assemble the PCB. Mount the PCB to the faceplate. Attach the plywood bracket to the faceplate. Mount the Pi and the PCB together. The HDMI coupler was mounted with hot glue, which bonds very well to the fiberboard faceplate. How to crimp a 40 pin cable to pass the data and power between the Pi and the PCB. This is right at the limit of what my vice can do.
and with the ribbon cable installed, the last connection is the HDMI cable. It's a little long for what I need, but it's the shortest one I have right now, so it will make do. And there we have it, a completed module. Now that it's complete, let's see if it fits in the rack. No problem. If I had a shorter HDMI cable, it would have gone in without any twisting. Now for the smoke test. This is a little more stressful than usual given the hardware involved. It passed no problem. Next, the operating system is loaded onto a micro SD card, and we can see if there's any life in this pie. And success. Now we need some custom software to interface between the USB and MIDI port inputs and the GPIO and SBI outports on the Pi. And while you can plug a monitor, mouse, and keyboard into the Pi like I have now for setup to develop the software, I recommend installing a VNC server of your choice and connecting to the Pi over Wi-Fi. That way you can work on it from your regular computer if that's more convenient. And there you have it, the hardware side of a Raspberry Pi MIDI module. I'm going to do a part two that briefly covers the software that I'm going to write for this, and of course, do a demo of what it can do. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.